Hi, I'm Alastair, and in this video I'd like to tell you about the Node Redscape escape room control software I made based on Node Red. It's robust, modular, customizable, and 100% free and open source, and I'd like to show you what you can do with it. A modern escape room might have anywhere from 10 to 100 separate devices. These could be controllers for electronic puzzles or props, lighting, sound or other effects in the room. Rather than have them all operating individually and standalone, Node Redscape allows you to network all these devices together and use a standard messaging format to send and receive information between them. These messages can be used to report on the current state of any device or to trigger actions when certain events occur. Node Redscape gives you a node-based graphical user interface where you can drag and drop dependencies or trigger actions based on the content of those messages. So you can adjust the behavior of every device based on the overall state of the game flow. For example, you can activate a sequence of puzzles one after another only after their preceding dependencies have been met. Or you could automatically open the main door to the room after an intro video had played, or trigger a lightning effect or fog machine when a puzzle had been solved, or change the soundtrack when only a certain amount of time remained on the game clock. Messages are sent in a human-readable JSON format, and these messages can be delivered to devices connected via a wired connection like Ethernet, RS-232 or RS-4856 serial interface, or wirelessly over Wi-Fi. And you can also use industry standard protocols like DMX, Modbus, MQTT, UDP, TCP or WebSockets. It's been tested to work with a wide range of common controller devices, including Arduinos, ESP8266, ESP32, Raspberry Pis and PLCs. To make any device compatible with Node Redscape, you simply need to insert some lines of code in the program to first establish a connection to the Node Red server, to send updates to the server when the state of the device changes, and also to act upon any messages that are received from the server. Every message contains a unique ID that identifies the device on the network. But after that, the message content is completely customizable. So devices can send or process as many or as few fields of information as are relevant to them. And there are some templates provided of how to do this on different platforms. On the Node Red server, you then create a flow that defines the actions and events that occur based on the content of those messages. There are several example flows provided that you can use as templates. Simply copy and paste them and then edit the nodes to customise them for the behaviour of every new device you add to the network. Having configured the back-end infrastructure, let me show you now some of the front-end features, starting with the dashboard. This is a web-based graphical interface that presents a real-time display of the state of every device. You can view this on the machine that's running the Node-RED server itself or on any other device connected to the network, including a tablet or mobile phone. And to demonstrate how it works, here I've laid out four common escape room puzzles. And these are all example projects I've demonstrated in previous tutorials on this channel. I've got a keypad puzzle, an RFID puzzle, a connect the wires puzzle and a toggle switches puzzle. And at the top of the screen, I'm showing the dashboard widgets I've created, showing the status information that Node-RED receives from each of these puzzle controllers. So as players enter codes on the keypad to try to guess the solution, they get visual feedback on the display in front of them. But the Games Master also sees every attempt they make on the dashboard. For the RFID puzzle, when players insert a tag, the tag ID gets sent to Node-RED, this one isn't correct, so the LED light here and the bar on the dashboard stay red. It only turns green when the correct tag is placed. And by having all this status information available, it means the Games Master is able to give context-sensitive feedback to players throughout the game. Here on the Connect the Wires puzzle, you can see I've only got two of the connections correct. The Games Master can tell players which ones they've got wrong. They don't need to do that awkward thing where they come on the loudspeaker and ask where you're up to or ask you to do something you've already tried. 
And for the toggle switches puzzle, the display on the dashboard has icons showing the exact position of each switch in the array. Now returning to the pin code puzzle, if players are still unable to solve it after repeated attempts, an option the Games Master has is to click this solve button on the dashboard, which forces an override of the state of the puzzle. And you can see that that sets the LED green both on the dashboard and on the device, and the players can move on in the game. Now as well as the dashboard view intended for the Games Master, you can also create as many other displays as you want. Each display has its own unique endpoint and you could choose exactly what information you want it to show and how to style it using regular HTML, JavaScript and CSS. So one common application is to create an in-game timer display for players. That can be time elapsed since the game started or time remaining, or both. To make that display more interesting, you might choose to have an animated background that fits the theme of your game, and Node Redscape comes with several examples included. You might also want to show other information on that display, such as a text message. This could be automatically triggered, for example if players enter the wrong code on the keypad three times, you could send a predefined hint to them. Or you can have a free text message box that Games Masters can use to send messages to players. You can even trigger video or audio content that will play in the room. So that's a brief overview, but there's much more you can do with Node-RED. It's really a great piece of software. I'll be preparing some more detailed guides over the coming months, but you can download all the code from GitHub right now. There's separate folders containing example projects for different devices using a variety of protocols. And then in the Node-RED folder, you can find the accompanying flows, including all the examples I've shown in this video. You can download, learn from them, adapt them, and use them to deliver a next level of automated control in your escape rooms. If there's any questions you have, suggestions for future features, or want to know how to perform a particular task, please do let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy using it.